Welcome to Elector Online. Here's our final part of the summary videos on how to find the tension in various situations. So here we have the inclined plane. The first example here, this is example 21. I guess I didn't number them all. This is 22. This is example 23. In 21 here, notice that there's no friction, but on 22 there is friction. So what is the difference? Well, there's no friction. Notice everything will accelerate in a clockwise direction. M2 will come down and one will go up the incline. The tension must be the same on both sides of the pulley because the pulley has no mass and no friction. That needs to be indicated. And so you can see that tension 2 can be found by isolating M2. It's simply going to equal the weight of M2G, or M2, which is M2G, minus M times A because it is actually accelerating downward, which takes some of the tension of the string holding M2. On the other side, T1 can be found by saying that T1 must be equal to the component of the weight along the incline, which is M1G sine theta, plus the force required to accelerate M1, which is M1A. Notice again that they will be equal to each other, so this is equal to that. What if there's tension? How does that change things? Well, the tension T1 and T2 will still be the same. They'll still be equal to each other. T2 will still be M2G minus M2A, just like before, because it's, it's assumed to be accelerating this way. And let me indicate that here. So we're assuming the acceleration will be in this direction. So therefore, you could say that M2, T2 will be M2G minus M2A because it's accelerating downward. And T1 will be equal to the component of the weight along the incline, which is M1G sine theta, plus the force required to overcome the friction, which in this case is going to be M1G cosine theta mu, plus the force required to accelerate M1 against gravity. And so you can see that T1 will be the sum of these three components, but it'll be equal to the difference between those two. And finally, what if we have a double inclined plane, an incline on both sides, two masses, M1, M2. Let's say there is friction. So first we draw M1G and the two components perpendicular and parallel to the incline. M2G, the two components perpendicular and parallel to the incline. Notice that the two angles are different. They're not the same angle. They don't have to be the same. T1 and T2 will be the same because the pulley is assumed to have no mass and no friction. So we can say that T1 equals T2. And we're going to use the concept that the net force equals MA and look at each drawing separately. So first we look at M2. So if we draw a free body diagram here, and we know that it's accelerating this direction, then this will be the aiding force, and those two will be the opposing forces, the tension, and the friction force will oppose the acceleration. M2G sine theta uh, sine phi will aid the acceleration. So it's the forces aiding minus the forces opposing. So the M2G sine phi is aiding the acceleration. T2 is opposing. And M2G cos theta mu is opposing as well. And that must equal the mass times acceleration. Solving that for T2, we get this. Secondly, we're going to look at M1. And we can say that the aiding force minus the opposing force equals M1A. The aiding force, the, the acceleration is up the incline. The only force that does that is T1. And so T1 is the aiding force. The opposing force is the M1G sine theta, which is the component of the weight along the incline, and the friction force, which is M1G cosine theta times mu. The net force must equal M1A. Solve for T1, we get T1 is equal to the force required to accelerate the object, to hold it against gravity along the incline, and to overcome the friction. And that is how we find the tension in these various ways.